Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who attended today and they travelled um, quite a distance to see me actually, um, almost half the country. Uh, they live in um, Sussex, which is a county south of England, um, and in a city called Chichester. And they set out really early this morning and they had an appointment late this afternoon. And I'll just give you a background whilst you're watching the video. The patients had ongoing problems with this, their left ear, for the last three or so months. Um, they've tried to remove the wax themselves with a combination of um, earwax drops and they've also used, uh, admittedly, cotton buds. Um, the symptoms worsened, so they visited their GP and they managed to get an EN2 referral quite quickly, actually. So it's quite impressive that part of the country that the patient from referral to being seen by ENT is quite quick. And they actually saw ENT last week. And upon attending, the patient also had earwax in their right ear, which they weren't aware about. It was non-troublesome for the patient. So um, the right ear was cleared, but this, the left ear, um, they struggled to remove this and it was became quite uncomfortable for the patient. And they were advised to um, use some more softening drops, so some olive oil spray and drops and I th they've got a follow-up appointment to be seen again by ENT to try and remove this and in the meantime the patient um, went on YouTube and did some research and came across my channel and decided to book in and um, so uh, very honoured for a patient travelling so far to see me today and it is, it, the procedure um, was a bit more complex than um, when it first appeared. Now the first obstacle is the patient's entrance. You can see it's very, very narrow, it's almost collapsed. Well, not almost, it is a collapsed entrance of the ear canal. So the cartilage has, um, so the posterior cartilage, um, which is the back part, the cartilage on the back part of the ear near the entrance, has almost closed upon itself. So um, we, to gain access is quite difficult. And we can see we removed the first plug um, and I then managed to bring this more deeper plug to the entrance. So that wasn't the difficulty, getting uh, the wax deep from the ear towards the entrance. It's actually then getting it out the entrance that was more tricky, believe it or not. So we were right near the entrance. So you can see there's a lot of hairs there, uh, a lot of cilia. And so in essence, we've done the hard job. We've brought this wax forwards, but it's just trapped near the entrance. And we're going to have to stretch the patient's ear open in a moment to just release this plug because it's just trapped. Now, once you've, we've done that, um, what you'll see is that there's a lot of dead skin there. The ear canal's quite traumatised as well because the patient had been poking in the ear. And they, they, they said the, the procedure last week was a bit uncomfortable, so all that um, made the patient's ear a bit tender. So it's quite red and it's quite wet and damp because they've been using a lot of drops over a long, pretty long period of time. So there's a lot of dead skin, um, you'll see that. Um, wet dead skin at, but also there was some discharge and um, the discharge was collecting in the inferior recess which is the basin the little ditch uh, trench almost um, at the floor of the eardrum so the ear canal is a little dip there and also on the back part of the eardrum itself and upon removing that you will see uh, the smallest of perforations so we call it a pinhole perforation now I don't think that the patient's pinhole perforation was caused even by themselves poking in the ears or um, any other trauma. I think from looking at the ear, I think they had a, 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 acute otitis media with effusion. So acute otitis media with effusion is an infection of the middle ear. So the middle ear is the cavity behind the eardrum. And I feel there's a buildup of fluid. Um, so that's the effusion and that can get infected. and. Uh, the best analogy I can give is if you imagine you've got a water balloon and you keep filling that with water, there'll be a point where that water balloon's going to pop because it's just too much water. And it's the same with the middle ear. Um, when you've got a buildup of effusion fluid, eventually that fluid is going to have to go somewhere. Something's going to have to give and it can burst through the eardrum. And I think they had a, a glue ear because that part of the eardrum was slightly bulged as well. So when you've got a lot of fluid build up behind the eardrum, it's going to put tension behind the eardrum. So it's going to push the eardrum outwards towards the entrance. And then it pops. And I think all this discharge I removed was from the middle ear. Now, the perforation, now it, it may also be that this perforation has been there for a long, 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 long time and completely unaware to the patient because it's 
very unlikely a, a perforation of that size um, is actually going to affect the patient's hearing. So I'll come back to that in a moment. So you can see we're <laughs> making progress now. We're, we brought this plug forward. It's just got trapped um, at the entrance of the ear canal. The, ear, the entrance doesn't want to let this go. It's almost like a Venus flytrap. It's, it's almost closed itself upon this wax. And we've just got this last plug at the bottom. So this is literally hanging out of the patient's ear now. See lots of, lot of hairs there as well, it's matted. That's another telltale sign that, that a cotton bud's been used. When you've got um, hairs matted in the wax, um, it either means that a cotton bud's been used and it's pushed um, the hairs deep into the ear um, and into the wax, or um, they have their, um, they trim their ear hairs and they fly into the ear. So you can see we've cleared the blockage, but it's still quite wet and damp in there. And that's some discharge there on the eardrum. And there's some dead skin around it. So we're just going to be very gentle, delicate here. So you can see you've got a bit of keratin out as well. So we have referred the patient to their GP. I've recommended some, um, because of the hold, you don't want to use any topical um, eardrops, antibiotics, because most of them are known as ototoxic, which means that these antibiotics, if they enter the middle ear via a hole in the eardrum, it can then cause permanent hearing loss. So there is um, a type of drops called ciprofloxacin, which used to be, um, th th they were usually used off-label for the ear. They're predominantly eye drops. They are safe to use, but because this patient's ear canal entrance is quite narrow as well, this think they'll benefit more from oral antibiotics. But of course, it's up to the GP. We've just referred that now. You can see the eardrum's more visible, but they're still, so you can see the hammer bone to the left. They've got a very narrow, bendy ear. So you can see this discharge on the eardrum. We're going to be really, really careful now. You may have not have noticed, but that perforation is now in view. And it's not something that I detected straight away. It's almost like a hallucination. The perforation looked like something else. But just to the left of the suction probe, you can see the tiniest of dots there, a black dot. And I just thought it, at first it was possibly some crusted um, dark earwax that was on the eardrum, because obviously the patient was poking in the ear. And you can see this bumpy ear. Can you know how I said earlier at the beginning of the video that the ear canal just looks a bit angry and tender? So there's bumps here. So I've just come back near the entrance. I'm just going to peel some of this dead skin away. That's lining the floor of the ear canal. And see how this is slowly but surely coming away. We're not going to get every lot of that speck. Um, by doing so, we can cause injury and trauma to the patient. And um, it can be quite noisy for the patient as well. So we've got to bear that in mind. Um, if any of you have had microsuction performed before, you'll be aware that it is a very noisy procedure. Especially when you've got dead skin like this, because it can clarinet. And clarinet is um, probably bored of me saying this, actually, because I've been saying it quite a lot in my previous videos of late. Um, that clarinetting is when you suction dead skin, the skin violently flaps, and it flaps at the tip of the sucker, and that emits a loud, high-frequency squeal. So quite often I like, because um, there's always new people watching the channel, so I like to uh, just ensure that um, for any new viewers they're, they're up to speed with um, ear clinical ear care and some of the um, terms that we use. So even from this angle at the moment, that little blackish dot on the eardrum, I, 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 at this stage I'm unaware that that's a perforation still. Um, it, to me, as I said, it looks like it's just um, some crusted dead uh, wax and it's just stuck on the drum, and, um, but I, it is in view. I'm aware there's a dot there, um, and I'm gonna. I'm planning at the end just to hover over it to see if we can remove it because move the wax. So again, just at the front of the ear canal, just be careful because the I mean, the patient's here is very tender even prior to attending. So just be really really careful. So that back part of the eardrum. Um, which you'll see more in a moment. It is bulged as well, and it's an extremely bendy ear canal. It veers off right to the left. You can see the eardrum's not even in view at the moment. So the endoscope is actually inserted straight into the ear. And for most people, the eardrum will just be to the left of the sucker, um, if not um, directly behind the sucker. But 
His patient ear canal, and it veers off to the left, there's a sharp bend. And we can only see the back part of the eardrum at the moment. The front part is completely out of view. So again, just being really gentle. Just want to get some of this dead skin discharge off the floor of the ear canal. Um, and we just got to be careful we don't make contacts like the game of operation. We don't want to touch the sides. Um, in the case of the game of operation, I think uh, the patients, I think they're, they're a red light, uh, as a bulb for their nose, which illuminates, and there was a buzzer, but in, in a real patient, um, it's actually uncomfortable for them, and they might jump. And So as you want to see at the bottom there, can you see that bump of the ear canal? So hopefully that settles now. So again, just on the back part of the ear canal, and now, also on the eardrums here, as I'm peeling away the skin, some of the skin's on the back part of the ear canal, some is actually on the eardrum itself. So just to the top back region of the um, eardrum, which is called the posterior superior quadrant. So even at this stage, it just doesn't look like a hole to me. Um, but it's a very, when it comes, more apparent, um, it's very spherical in in shape, which typically uh, means that it's not a traumatic um, perforation, it's not a tear, so if an instrument um, caused that, or uh, like a scalpel for example, you'll get a slit, but this is very circular. Now I'm just going over the top and thinking this is some dead whack, um, and there probably was actually, um, in hindsight, there probably was a bit of crusted dead uh, wax or skin on top of it and I've removed that now you had a good view there now I came out the end it's, it's got a bit wet so it is a bit of a wet perforation so I'm just hovering over it again and you can see there's a bit of discharge there still coming out is weeping so I'm very I'm quite convinced that the patient's got a building of fluid behind the eardrum back part of the eardrum does look quite red still, whereas the front part is a bit more blue, is what we expect. And again, there's some just hovering over the eardrum, there's just some discharge there. And you can see how circular it is. And it's, now it's a lot more apparent, this perforation. It is. Now you look at that and you're fully aware that it is a hole of the eardrum and nothing else. So it's just a bit of skin there. As I said, we're not going to get every little last speck out. But I'm really pleased with that as it is. So this is just a video of the patient's right ear. You can compare and contrast the difference. So it's a different colour. It's more pink in appearance. There's no dead skin or terrier discharge. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Uh, keep well. Um, stay tuned. And remember, be nice and be kind. Thank you.